How engaged are your students during a lesson? Are they actively participating or simply passively listening? And whether or not you had a student who simply zoned out because they lost interest in a lesson. Hi, my name is Evgeny and today we're looking at top 5 apps to make your lessons more dynamic and more engaging. Let's put an end to monotonous and teacher-centered lectures and move to more dynamic and engaging sessions. And the following 5 apps will help us do just that. A Mentimeter, Google Jamboard, Padlet, Parlay, and Nearpod Time to Climb. Mentimeter is going to be our first app, and it's just an amazing simple tool to get real-time feedback from your students. To access Mentimeter, all you need to do is go to mentimeter.com, go through the registration process and create a presentation. This is the presentation that I put together for my class. All I need to do as an instructor is to click on share, click copy link, jump to my Zoom where I have myself and three of the students open chat and paste the link from the students and click on chat and open the link in the browser. I need to select how I'm feeling today. I'm feeling awesome. And from the teachers and you starting to see real time feedback. If you would like your students to see this feedback, go to share screen and share your Mentimeter screen. And now if we go back to the students, they now see the feedback of their classmates. Now let's move on to the next question. Describe technology with three words. Students now starting to put in more answers. Some of the words stands out, which will mean that more than one student selected great, a couple of students selected good. Nice way to gauge the temperature in the classroom before you start the class. Our final question is a Q&A from the students and I can now ask a question. One student submitted a couple of questions, I as a teacher will see them uh, on my screen. Uh, I can scroll through them. Uh, once a question is answered, I can mark it as answered. It's a very interactive way to have Q&A sessions uh, embedded into your lessons. So that was a Mentimeter, an easy and straightforward way to engage your students into your lesson, into your presentation, and get real-time feedback on the spot. If you would like to know more about the Mentimeter, how to set things up, how to create the presentation, how to embed those quizzes, there'll be a link in the description for a more in-depth tutorial. Moving on, we have Google Jamboard, which you can access by either clicking on Google Apps in the top right corner. If you have a Google account, scrolling all the way down until you see Jamboard or simply going to jamboard.google.com. What Jamboard is, is basically a workspace, a canvas, uh, which you and your students can access at the same time. I've created this simple Jamboard to demonstrate one of the potential uses. In this activity, I would like students to use diamond ranking uh, to categorize the three R's of living a sustainable lifestyle. So we have the our three R's right here and we have diamond ranking right here. To engage students in the Jamboard, all I need to do is click on share, copy this link, making sure that anyone on the internet with this link can edit and you can change the setting right here. Then I'm gonna click copy on this link, go to Zoom, go to chat, paste the link here. From the students end, all they need to do is go to chat, they will see the link over there. Uh, I'm going to click, this will take me to a uh, Google Jamboard. I'm going to rearrange those R's into the diamond shape. And as a teacher, I can see what is happening, what you can do as well. You can create multiple copies of the same Jamboard and assign each particular Jamboard to the breakout session. So you have different groups of students working on different Jamboards. Uh, another way to use Google Jamboard is to play board games. There were some questions in the past about how can we play board games while we're teaching remotely. As you can see, I've just pasted here a Monopoly map, counters right here. I have players money right here, which I can easily edit. Uh, students can move counters and enjoy the game. This is how you can play Monopoly or any other board game that you have customized for your lesson. Another way to use Jamboard is for exit ticket. So this is what I quickly created right here. We have a question, how well do you think you understood mixed fractions? What students will do is simply leave a tick next to the either thumb up or thumb down, and this will give you an understanding 
uh, of whether or not your students got the concept. Is it engaging? I think it is. Uh, it's responsive, uh, gets you real-time data. Students are engaged, they're participating, uh, they're actively doing something and not just simply listening to your lectures. Padlet is by far my favorite tool to use if I want to engage students into online discussions. Padlet can be accessed by going to padlet.com. Once you go through the registration process, created your first Padlet, which is basically a discussion wall or board, which uh, you can use with your class. This is one example that I created for this demonstration. This is a digital citizenship board, which has eight questions related to digital citizenship. I would like my students to engage with this content. I would like them to read, watch some of the video clips and then respond to the questions or the video prompt. If you would like to learn more about how to use Padlet, there will be a link in the description for a more in-depth tutorial. Parlay is one of the tools that often overlooked by educators, but I believe it's a beautiful tool to engage your students into online discussions. Think about Parlay as a more advanced version of Padlet where you can engage students in online discussions with more functionality, with more tracking tools. And this is what it looks like. First of all, to access Parlay, all you need to do is go to parlayideas.com, create your account and create a round table discussion. In this round table, I want students to think and express their thoughts around runaway trolley dilemma. So I've, been, I've included some text here um, and also um, embedded a little image. What I'm going to do now is invite students by clicking on this plus sign. I can either share a code or share a join link or magic link. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to paste it onto my Zoom chat. Going back to the students view, the, the link will appear right there. I'm going to click on this link. There will be a welcome message instructing them to preview the prompt first, submit a response and join the discussion. I'm going to click OK. Got it and uh, read the prompt as uh, instructed and then write my response right here. This is my response. One of the things that I personally like about Parlay is that students can click on see point details, which will tell them what is that that is expected of them in this assignment. Uh, I said three parameters, critical thinking, communication and collaboration. And uh, there's so much more you can do when it comes to grading. We're not going to go into this depth in this video. There will be a standalone tutorial for Parlay. But just to highlight this feature, the students will see what is that that they're graded on. Once students have submitted their response, they will be navigated to another prompt which will ask them to review responses and provide feedback and build on ideas. I'm going to click got it and see two responses. So I'm going to click on comment and leave my comment here. And as you can see, there's also sentence starters to help students generate more meaningful comments from the teachers. And if I go back again, I look at my students, look at their activity. I can click on summary, see what is happening, what students are writing. I can click on assessment and assess each particular response. If you are a, an English teacher or a social studies teacher, or if you just want to engage your students in an online discussion, a parallel ideas is just an amazing tool to do that. Finally, we have Nearpod Time to Climb, which is another cool way to engage your students into your lesson. And this is what it looks like. I have three students waiting to join the race to the top. I have student one, I have student two and student three. Once I have all my students, I'm going to click start. As you can see, there are sound effects, there's animation from the students. And you now see the first question, how many days are in a week? So I'm going to select some of the answers students get the, the real-time feedback and we see the animation going on we see some of the students going higher than others because they answered the question correctly uh, we have another question what animal is in the picture you can see once students answer their question their characters uh, moving up accordingly we have one more question which is which of the following is a trapezoid once we finish the activity we have student two uh, who is the winner and this is again what students see from their end, and this is what a teacher see from their end. Isn't it wonderful? A simple quiz, but we have leaderboard, we have uh, interactivity, we have animation, we have sound effect. It's just wonderful how everything can be packaged in one simple tool. Race to the top near pod. Today, we had a look at five tools to help you make your lessons more engaging and more interactive. The five tools that we had a look at today were Mentimeter, Jamboard, 
Padlet, Parlay, and Nearpod. If you have any questions about any of these tools, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as fast as I can. There will also be a follow-up in-depth tutorial on each of these tools and I will drop the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, you might as well check out other tutorials I have on educational technology. But apart from that, I thank you for taking your time to check out this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.